step into the elegant world of 1930s Hollywood with the classic film Dinner at Eight. Directed by George Cukor, this movie stands as a timeless portrayal of societal intricacies, following the lives of diverse characters preparing for a high society dinner party. Set against the backdrop of Great Depression here in New York, the film weaves together various subplots, revealing the complexities of relationships and ambitions. Have you ever revisited a movie and found it held a new significance, evoking cherished memories? Dinner at Eight has that effect for many, resonating beyond its initial release to become a touchstone for personal reflections and shared experiences. Your most cherished memory or personal experience tied to this film could be a conversation sparked by its themes, a nostalgic family viewing, or an unexpected connection to one of the characters. We'd love to hear your stories and memories in the comments below. Captivating in its portrayal of human interactions and societal nuances, Dinner at Eight remains a captivating snapshot of a bygone era, inviting audiences to reflect on timeless themes that transcend generations. MGM's 1933 movie Dinner at Eight followed the success of their 1932 hit Grand Hotel. This film, directed by George Cukor, was made in just 27 days, setting a demanding pace for future productions. It marked David O. Selznick's debut at MGM, and, like its predecessor, was a lucrative venture for the studio, earning nearly $1 million in profit. Its success cemented its place as a notable classic of the time, showcasing MGM's ability to produce financially rewarding ensemble films. George Cukor, the director of the 1933 film Dinner at Eight, once remarked about Marie Dressler's portrayal of Carlotta. She acquired a peculiar distinction, a magnificence. She was a law unto herself. Dressler, drawing inspiration from popular stage actress Maxine Elliott, brought a unique flair to the character, mastering the art of making memorable entrances with great effect. Cukor noted her ability to mug and carry on, yet emphasized her skill in commanding attention and grandeur, setting the tone for a performance that resonated with the audience. Jean Harlow's experience on the set of the 1933 movie Dinner at Eight varied notably. While she got along with most co-stars, her rapport with Wallace Beery was strained. Their prior work history in The Secret Six had bred mutual disdain, translating into an authentic animosity during filming. Cast as a couple in turmoil, their off-screen tension lent a genuine edge to their on-screen performances, enriching the character's comedic dynamic. Harlow's discomfort with Beery's demeanor amplified the on-screen chemistry, contributing to the film's engaging portrayal of a dissonant couple. In Dinner at Eight, Jean Harlow's performance opposite Wallace Beery wasn't just scripted tension. Their off-screen animosity lent authenticity to their on-screen discord. Meanwhile, Marie Dressler's portrayal of Carlotta was praised by George Cukor for its distinct magnificence. Interestingly, Dressler herself was astounded by Harlow's talent, noting her exceptional skill in the film. Moreover, the casting choices could have been different, as Alice Brady was initially considered for a different role. The film's legacy is also marked by the unfortunate deaths of Louise Klosser Hale, Marie Dressler, and Jean Harlow within a few years of its release, adding a poignant layer to its history. Jean Harlow, captivated by Marie Dressler's prowess, lauded the veteran actress for her generous spirit on the set of the film. Being in the same cast with Marie was a break for me, said Harlow. She's one trooper I'd never try to steal a scene from. It'd be like trying to carry Italy against Mussolini. Additionally, Harlow revealed that the movie was filmed in near chronological order to heighten the emotional impact of the pivotal scenes. This unique approach aimed to evoke the full dramatic power during filming, allowing the cast to immerse themselves fully in the storyline. Such insights into the mutual admiration between Harlow and Dressler, along with the strategic filming sequence, shed light on the collaborative dynamics behind the iconic 1933 film Dinner at Eight. Marie Dressler's portrayal of Carlotta in the 1933 film Dinner at Eight is remembered for a peculiar detail her dog's name. Originally named Mussolini, reflecting the era's political climate, the dog was post-dubbed as Tarzan due to changing sensitivities. Despite the change, Dressler's lips still visibly mouthed the original name, creating an intriguing behind-the-scenes aspect of the film. This alteration mirrors the evolving social context of the 1930s, adding a curious layer to Dressler's performance and the film's historical backdrop. 
Carlotta's withering remark about that man with the cigar in the 1933 movie Dinner at Eight is a subtle jab at Groucho Marx, whose improvisations had previously teased George S. Kaufman's scripts for the coconuts and animal crackers on stage. The film, which premiered at New York's Esther Theater on August 23, 1933, adapted from a play that debuted on Broadway in October 1932. This stage production ran for 232 performances, showcasing talents like Constance Collier, Paul Harvey, Conway Tyrrell, and Cesar Romero, though the movie omitted Romero's character, Rixi. The play even saw revivals, the last being in 2003. This nod to Mark's wit hints at the clever interplay between theater and film, showcasing the evolving dynamics of comedy and script adaptation in entertainment history. Included among the American Film Institute's 2000 list of the top 100 funniest American movies, Dinner at Eight stands as a testament to the wit and humor of its time. The film, released in the early 30 seconds, captured audiences with its ensemble cast and comedic storyline. Notable for its inclusion in the prestigious list, this recognition solidifies its enduring impact on American cinema, highlighting its comedic essence that continues to entertain audiences to this day. The movie navigates intricate relationships and dynamics during a high society dinner party, showcasing a blend of humor and underlying tensions. Beyond its entertainment value, Dinner at Eight also touches on medical practices of the era. In a pivotal scene, the treatment of chest pain with amyl nitrite, a practice commonly employed at the time, serves as an interesting reflection of medical history. This method, while reflective of its era, contrasts starkly with contemporary practices for managing cardiac conditions, offering a glimpse into the evolution of medical care since the film's release. The film's inclusion in the AFI's Top 100 Funniest American Movies underscores its enduring impact on the comedy genre, solidifying its place in cinematic history as a timeless source of humor and entertainment. MGM's second all-star picture, Dinner at Eight, released in 1933, navigates the intricacies of relationships during a high-society dinner party. The film, a follow-up to the successful Grand Hotel, directed by George Cukor, showcases the studio's adeptness at producing financially rewarding ensemble films. Despite the potential complications of a large cast, the 27-day shoot went smoothly, with no unforeseen problems. One standout performance comes from John Barrymore, who bravely takes on the role of Larry Renault, a has-been actor struggling with alcoholism. Barrymore's portrayal hits close to home, as he was grappling with chronic alcoholism, and in the midst of ending his third marriage, a reflection of his character's tumultuous life. This adds a layer of authenticity to Renault's character, and underscores the challenges Barrymore faced during this period, which would contribute to his death in 1942 at the age of 60. The film's enduring impact on American cinema is evident in its inclusion in the American Film Institute's Top 100 Funniest American Movies. Released in the early 30 seconds, Dinner at Eight captivated audiences with its comedic essence, showcasing a blend of humor and underlying tensions. Beyond entertainment, the movie offers insights into the medical practices of the time, notably in a pivotal scene depicting the treatment of chest pain with amyl nitrite, reflecting the evolution of medical care since the film's release. In conclusion, Dinner at Eight not only solidifies its place in cinematic history as a timeless source of humor and entertainment, but also serves as a poignant reflection of the challenges faced by its cast, particularly John Barrymore, during its production. This MGM classic, marked by its smooth filming process and powerful performances, stands as a testament to the studio's prowess in creating enduring and impactful ensemble films. As we draw the curtains on our journey through the timeless elegance of Dinner at Eight, I invite you to let the echoes of this cinematic masterpiece linger in the corridors of your thoughts. This 1930s gem, a symphony of wit, drama, and the poignant dance of human intricacies, beckons you to traverse the landscapes of your own experiences. In the quietude that follows, consider the characters who found a home in your heart, the suave tact of Oliver Jordan, the enigmatic diva Carlotta Vance, or the unfiltered candor of Kitty Packard. Let their tales weave into the fabric of your own narrative, prompting introspection on the parallels between the celluloid and the tapestry of your life. What scenes stirred dormant emotions within you? Was it the whimsical banter over dinner tables, the clandestine rendezvous in opulent parlors, or perhaps the subtle nuances of societal commentary? 
Share your whispers of connection with this cinematic relic, and let the collective resonance of shared reflections unfold like a timeless sonnet. Your memories, musings, and insights are the threads that keep the spirit of dinner at eight alive. As we navigate the vast expanse of time, may this classic continue to be a compass, guiding you through the labyrinth of your own narratives. Thank you for embarking on this cinematic exploration. Your presence has added a layer of richness to the tapestry of our shared appreciation. Until we rendezvous again in the realms of storytelling, reflect, reminisce, and revel in the beauty of connection through the lens of dinner at eight. With gratitude, P.S. Your thoughts are a treasure. Share them with us and fellow enthusiasts. Let the dialogue continue, 